Good afternoon. It's a quiet crowd this morning. <laughs> Felt bad for Raggy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. And I usually hate when people do that, but it seems like it works a little bit. Somehow people are start smiling. So, um, delight always to be with you here, and uh, it's just wonderful to be with the people of God. People get discouraged when they look around and see, oh, you know. But if the Lord is here, that's really what counts. That's really what cheer up the heart and lift up the spirit in spite of our weak singing, in spite of whatever. It's a delight to be with the people of God and to open the word of God together. I think this is a privilege that not many people in the world have. The ability to be together on Lord's Day and also to open the word of God together to get something for our souls to sustain us on this wilderness journey. It uh, was a little meal that sustained Elijah for 40 days in the desert. And we are in the desert. Things are difficult and harsh, whatever circumstance it is. And we need to be sustained and support as we walk in this scene. And with that, I would like to read just very briefly, and I'll touch on things very, very briefly again. But turn with me to the book of Daniel. Now, how could anyone be brief in the book of Daniel? Let me see if I could try to do that. Let's go to the book of Daniel, chapter 9. The book of Daniel, chapter 9. And I will start reading from verse 1. Right? You got your Bible open to chapter 9 of Daniel, and I'll start from verse 1. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet, that that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolation of Jerusalem. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God. Turn to chapter 10, please. Chapter 10 and verse 1. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, the king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belshazzar, and the king, and the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing, and he under, and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning Th three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine into my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the four and twenty days of the first months, as I was by the side of the river, which is Hadekel, then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed with linen, whose loins were girded with the gold of Obaz, Ophaz. His body was like uh, the burly, and his face as the apparent of the lighting, and his eyes as a lamp of fire, and his arms and his feet like the color of polished brass, and his voice of his word like the voice of a multitude. And finally, chapter 12 and the last verse. Daniel chapter 12 and the last verse. And that's verse 13. But go thou thy way till the end. Before thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. For thou shalt rest and stand in thy lot at the end of days. 
Let's just seek more help from the Lord. Lord Jesus, we give thee thanks again for this privilege of opening thy word and looking into it. We seek grace that thou will feed our souls, sustain us, help us to have our eyes fixed on thee, Lord Jesus, even through the scripture to learn how to adjust as we walk here in the scene. Feed our soul, we pray. We just seek help from above as we give thee thanks together. Lord Jesus, amen. All right. I read a verse in chapter 9. I read a couple of verses in chapter 10. And I read a verse in chapter 12. What is the whole idea? What I wanted to bring before you to encourage our hearts and to take our eyes to the Lord Jesus. Daniel is a very, very interesting and unique person. It's not a character. It's a person. A person who have lived in a day similar to our days. He lived in a world empire that dominated the whole world. And he had a very high position in there. These people were not primitive people. These people were very, very well advanced, whether it be in science, in architect, in anything. And Daniel happened to be there at that time. Very similar to our days. When you read the scripture, don't think these are primitive people running in the ropes and like on camels and donkey. These people were very well advanced. The Babylonian discover the mathematician, and so are the pharaohs. These people devises the time, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. It came from these people. So this is the first thing I want us to think about, that when we read about Daniel, this man was a brilliant, whether it be in science or in language or in any of these things. He was ahead of every one of the wise men of Babylon. But what impressed me about Daniel is this. Daniel read the scripture. When we go to chapter 9, usually this is Daniel's prayer. The very well known prayer that's worth of studying and memorizing. Just like you memorize Ephesians chapter 6. And we might touch on that a little bit. It's worth memorizing. That man prayed and the Spirit of God recorded it to us because it was so precious to the ears of heaven and it ought to be to us. Not we're going to repeat it so we could repeat a prayer. This is not the idea. But to learn how these men who were under a deep exercise because of the circumstances prayed. But then you said to yourself, good. But I looked at it this way. What made Daniel pray? What caused him to pray? We know him. First time we read about when he stood, when the king was going to kill all of the Babylonian uh, wise men, Daniel requested a prayer. It was a young people's prayer meeting. Daniel and his three friends. First young people's prayer meeting mentioned in the scripture. We stood in prayer meeting or whatever you call it. They knew something about seeking help from God when things are very difficult. There was a school exam. The examiner was the king himself. And they went to the Lord. And the Lord gives them the answer. And they got three pluses. It's a good practice besides studying also. Is to pray when you have an exam. What caused Daniel to pray? It said in verse 1 that he mentioned the, the son of the, um, uh, the, the king of the Mede in there. And he said, in the first year of his reign, that's verse 2 of chapter 9, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in desolation of Jerusalem. The first thing I want us to know is this. There is an impact when we read the word of God and understand it. And I don't read, and when Daniel understood the book of Jeremiah, he prepared a sermon so he could speak. When he read the book of Jeremiah, he went to pray. So when I read the word of God, of course, if you're going to speak, please study. Don't waste the people of God's time. But he prayed. His understanding of the scripture led him to pray. And he prayed this wonderful prayer. His understanding of... The, how many of us have read the book of Jeremiah? 
how many of us understood the book of Jeremiah? And as a result of that, how many of us went to pray to the Lord because we read the book of Jeremiah and understood the book of Jeremiah? How many of us know anything about Jeremiah except he's a weeping prophet? And then he said, what does that mean? Well, he was weeping all the time, apparently. But about what? Well, I don't know. But Daniel understood that. He spent time studying the word of God. Now, the, the, the thing that I hear most of the time, but we have no time. We have no time to read the word of God. We're busy. Well, Daniel put me to shame. This man have a job, have a very important job. This man was not running a department. He was not running an organization. He was not running a state. He was not even running one empire. This man ran three empires. He's the only one that I know in such a high position. He ran the Babylonian Empire, the Mede Empire, and the Persian Empire. He didn't say, well, I got to quit my job so I would have some time to study the scripture and write some books. No, the man had a job. He didn't say, well, I'm going to wait till I'm, till I'm retired and then I'm going to study the scripture. No, the man had a job. He was doing his job. He was doing his job all the way. And yet, he was studying Jeremiah to the point that he understood and start calculating things. Apparently, he was studying the scripture, not just reading them, but he had a pen and a paper with him. And he was writing things down and calculating time and everything. And when he understood it, that led him to pray. And I think it is very important for us when we read the word of God, especially in the days where we are living, that we need to go to the Lord and pray. The world is falling apart. It's been falling apart since the Lord Jesus was crucified. Nothing new. The world is falling apart. There is distress and perplexity. They cannot fix anything. Or they don't know. They stopped it here for a little bit. It pops up in here. And they stopped it here for a little bit. And then it pops up in here. And there is no, there is perplexity. There is no answer. And Daniel realize the only way that the world or his own people are in the state where they are in, it's because they have forsaken the law of their God. That's one thing he learned. The second thing he learned is this. God is true to his word. 70 years prior, Prior to that, he told Jeremiah that for 70 years, Jerusalem will be desolate. And it's exactly to the date. And that's one of the beauty about the book of Daniel. So I'll try to get to some of that stuff. But the most important thing that I want us to take home is this. When we read the word of God, and sometimes there are passages that are difficult. I, I, but take, read it again. And read it again. You know, when he read Jeremiah, he didn't have really the commentaries of Mr. Darby or the lectures of Mr. Kelly to understand the book of Daniel. You have them. You have them. He understood it. And that led him to a deep exercise to pray. He felt very helpless. He cannot change anything. But he knows who to go to to change things. And he went to the Lord and recorded to us this wonderful prayer. Studying the scripture Reading the scripture ought to lead our heart to the presence of the Lord. But reading the scripture not only led him to prayer, led him to try to be in a close communion with the Lord to get some understanding. To get un some understanding. It said in that he spent three weeks in chapter 10. He was fasting. He didn't eat pleasant bread. You read many times about Daniel fasting, and I'm not going to go to every one of them. But this time, it wasn't fasting like abstain from food, but it was abstaining from the pleasure of this world, from the legitimate thing. He just wanted to have some bread and water, perhaps. That's all he was looking for. He realized there is great things in the things of God that the other things he forgot his own food. And for three weeks, he was on that diet. Yet so exercised of what's going to take place. Daniel wanted 
to learn more. Every time Daniel had a vision, you find he had one after that. He seek to understand. He wanted to know more. And sometimes when you read the scripture, you feel like, I got it now. That's good. I know the Gospel of Mark very well now. I'm done with it and don't have to go. I heard that before. I heard this ministry somewhere. I read that somewhere in some book, and I don't want to. No. Daniel always wanted to learn more. He wanted to learn more. And he was so happy when Gabriel started explaining to him in chapter 10, What's going in chapter 11, actually, what's going to take place? You don't have to wait for Gabriel to explain to you anything. As a matter of fact, you know more than Gabriel. You have the Spirit of God who wrote the Word of God. And you don't need a mediator to come. You have the Spirit of God that takes the things of Christ and makes them known unto us. No excuse. You have the full Word of God. He had Jeremiah. That's all he had. Imagine, maybe from, Je uh, from Genesis to Jeremiah. That's all he had. You have the rest of it. He didn't have the book of Daniel either. And he spent time and energy. He wanted to learn more. He wanted to learn more from the word of God. And that should be the desire of our heart. Look. You have only one sword. Just one. There are not two swords or three. That's the only weapon you have. Would you think a soldier in his right mind to go to the battle without a sword, throw it away. Doesn't know how to use it. And then I'm going to, I'm in the Lord's army, right? And you don't even know your sword. It's the only thing we have. It's the only thing we have. And we need to be familiar and well versed with it. So when the enemy comes, because we have a warfare going on in the heavenly places. We have that written in here. As a matter of fact, I'll go to, um, when, well, we'll get to it. When we go to chapter 10, we will find that there was a battle going on in the heavenly places. There was a battle going on. The verses that you have said, it's real. It is not a theory that we memorize and know Ephesians chapter 6, but we have. We have to say that with conviction because it is true. There is a warfare going on. And the enemy of our souls and his armies are trying to shake us up. And to make us very unstable in regard to the word of God. And the only remedy we have as a believer is to go to the scripture and go to the scripture and go to the scripture. It's amazing really when Daniel prayed before I go to chapter 10 because... I want to give you just a little bit of um, do it your appetite. Maybe we'll go to and look at it more. In chapter 9, may I, I have exactly 10 minutes, so let's see how I'm going to do that. If I go to chapter um, 9, and I'm just going to read a couple of verses. Um, I'll read verse 20, 21, chapter 9 and verse 21. Yeah, while I was speaking in prayer, the man is praying, okay? Daniel is praying. Even the man Gabriel, whom I have seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touch me about the time of the evening oblation. When we have hard circumstances, two things must take in place. Prayer. But then God is not going to move. Except there is an evening oblation, the evening sacrifice. How important is the work of Christ? How important is the work of Christ? One of the things about the book of Daniel, when the crazy king of the north came, the first thing he did, or one of the things that he did, he stopped the evening oblation. The offering up, the prayer, the sacrifice to God, spending time in the presence of the Lord. That's what the enemy was trying to do. He did it by force. What's stopping your evening oblation? What is stopping your evening time or morning time with the Lord? What's stopping that? Didn't stop Daniel, apparently, and he was a busy man. He was running 120 states. The United States is 50, and they all speak English. And you cannot even govern them all and get them all to agree on one thing. That man was governing, by the time we get to the book of Esther, was 127, 127 states. Some of them 
you know, book of Daniel is one of the books in the Bible that have part of it is Aramaic. He spoke different languages. And yet Daniel, with his position, controlling all of that, overseeing all of that, managing strategically, tactically the affair of this empire. He had time to think of the evening oblation. You read in chapter 6, he opened his window as it was his custom, and he prayed. So what do we have? What do we read there? He said in verse 24, now the king explaining to him, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. Should I go to the 70 weeks? I'll do it in two minutes. And I'm just going to give you an outline. You write them very quickly, and maybe some other time we'll expand on that. Okay, what did he really do? He said 70 weeks. God is giving him exactly when and where and how. Now, let's keep in mind one thing. The church of God is not part of that. I just want to make that very, very clear. People who mixed up these things start putting dates and times. We're talking about the nation of Israel. So 70 weeks. 70 years, really. That's what Daniel, that's Jeremiah have said. But now he said 70 weeks. And he divided them this way. He divided them this way. Um, let's go to verse 25. Now, therefore, and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore, Jeru to restore and build Jerusalem until the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks. So what we have here, seven weeks. Those weeks are seven years. So seven times seven is 49, correct? When did that start? The order that came out to build Jerusalem. If you read Nehemiah, chapter 2, verse 1, it was the year 454. Are you writing down? I'm not going to repeat those numbers again. 454. If you're not going to write down, I don't have to go through them because you're going to forget after I walk up. 454 B.C. The order came out to build. 49, right? Let's move on. Seven weeks and three scores and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall shall even be in troublous time. And after three scores and two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off and not for himself. 454 BC, the order came to build Jerusalem. 49 years later, Jerusalem, the walls were built. And then he speak about 62 weeks. So now, that's one week. Sorry, that's seven weeks. And then 62. That makes 69 weeks. So far, so good. My math is okay for those people who are smart in math and going to study aerospace and all kind of engineering stuff. So far, so good. All right. 62 times 7 is what? Anybody? I'll tell you because of time. 434 years, right? 62 times 7 is 4, 3, 4, right? No? Use your phone, calculator, your brain, whatever, help you. So far, so good? Okay. Add to those 49, it will give us what? 483. And then the Messiah would be cut off. Right? When he was cut off, got, got off, the Lord Jesus was crucified about the age of 33. So minus 33 will give us what? 450. 483 minus 33 will give us what? 450. But I said that the decree came out at 454. The Lord Jesus was born 4 B.C. He wasn't born the year zero. Got it? I'm moving on. Done with Daniel chapter 9. You got the prayer, and you got the 70 weeks of Daniel. And if you didn't take notes, too bad. What's that? We'll get to that other week. <laughs> because now, the rapture will take place, and the week will start to take place after we're gone from the scene. That's why we don't mix up things. We end at seven weeks with the Messiah cut off. 
But then we go to chapter 10, and we see he wasn't really cut off. Well, he was cut off, but there is an appearance of him in chapter 10. And in chapter 10, we read in verse 1. Because, again, studying the scripture would lead me to prayer. Studying the scripture would lead me to learn more, and God would reveal to me more things. But studying the scripture would lead me to Christ. And that's what I have for you in chapter 10. In chapter 10, Messiah cut off. The dealing with Israel is done. The Lord start after the day of Pentecost, dealing and bringing the truth of what he have before the foundation of the world. Israel is from the foundation of the world. It has to do with time and season. But the church of God is out of that. It was before the foundation of the world. You're chosen in him. Ephesians chapter 1. You guys probably memorized that. Before. Now. What does he see in chapter 10? He see in chapter 10. Now we are in the time of Cyrus. That's verse 1. He was standing by the river. He said he was, didn't eat bread in verse 3. And then in verse 4. And at the four and the 20 days of the first month, I was by the side of the great river, which is Hadakal, the Tigris in Iraq, today's language. Okay? He was standing by the river, but what does he see? He sees a man. And he said, I lifted up mine eyes. You see, he looked down as he was praying. He looked down on his knees as he was studying the scripture. But then he looked up. And studying the scripture would lead you to realize that you need the Lord who is in control of everything. Studying the scripture will lead you to know more. And you want it to know more. It is wonderful. You never finish it. You never exhaust it. You look at it and say, I read that chapter 50 times. And you know what? At the 50, one time you sit like, I didn't see that before. That's a beauty about the word of God. And then he looked, and what is the spirit of God directing him to a man? I lifted up my eyes, verse 5, and behold, a certain man. He's just a unique man. Why he's a unique man? Because he have girded with fine linen and gold of office. Fine linen speaks of the perfect humanity of the Lord Jesus. Impeccable, sinless. In him there was no sin. He did no sin. Perfect in all of his ways. And he knew no sin. Knew no sin, in him was no sin, and he did no sin. White linen. But not only that, he wasn't just a perfect human. He was divine. He was, and you have the best gold, the gold of offense. The best gold. His deity combined together. And when I look up from studying the scripture and looking at all of the prophecies and look at all of the things that are easy and look at all of the things that are hard and spend time even fasting to read the scripture, we usually read the, the Bible after we eat, right? Got to eat first. But this man, in spite of his hard work and busy schedule, he had time to study the scripture. As a result of that, he saw the Lord Jesus. This is the man that he has seen in there. But you know what? It's not that easy because if we read in the end of the, the chapter, and I want to touch on the verses that you guys said, um, in verse 19, it said of Daniel, uh, verse 19 of chapter 10 here, and said, that's the angel speaking to him, O man greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee. Be strong, yea, be strong. When and when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened, and, let, and I said, let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. You know what happened when you see the Lord Jesus? When you behold him, you know what that means? You read the scripture and you see the greatness and the glory of his person. You are strengthened. And when you are strengthened, you hear the words, fear not, 
Fear not. And you know what he told me? You are greatly beloved. Actually, three times in the book of Daniel, one in chapter 9, twice in chapter 10, Daniel is called greatly beloved. Daniel is called greatly beloved three times. One in chapter 9, you find it, and two times in chapter 10. He said, and he said to him, um, then he said in verse 20, then he said, no, it's not where... Wherefore, I come unto thee, and now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grisha shall come. Warfare in the heavenly places? Here it is. That's not a theory. This is one of the, there are a few times in the scripture where the curtain is open to see the unseen. And here we learn that there is a warfare going on in the heavenly places. Here it's with those kings who are, Satan deputies, principal, governors that rule, and Gabriel, and, and then we read later on in Michael. But the point I want to make is this. When we read the scripture, it leads us to pray. It strengthens our prayer time. It gives us clear understanding of the secret of the Lord. The treasure of wisdom is hidden in him. And when we read the scripture, we learn him. It takes time. It takes energy. It helps us because there is a warfare going on. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Hopefully you will get to that verse. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Daniel had it. And what else it gives us? In chapter... Um, 11 and in verse 2, and now I will show thee the truth. And the truth, the Lord Jesus said, will set you free. When you know the truth, it will take the bondage away and it will set you free. And finally, I read the verse in the end of the book, chapter 13, and it is the matter rest. Rest. Studying the scripture will lead you to pray, will lead you to know more of his blessed ways. He said, Moses knows his ways, and Miriam and Aaron his acts. You would know the ways of the Lord, why things are happening the way it's happening. But it gives the assurance that in spite of all of that, we are beloved. We are be we're loved of God when nobody else loves you. Just Keep that, it gives you some sense of security, something of stability, that you know that you are loved. People are seeking love and just seeking it in the wrong places. But we are loved by God, greatly beloved. Three times every word should be established at a mouth of two, two or three witnesses. Got it three times. Daniel, don't worry. You are beloved. Even if the king of Persia doesn't love you, even if the king of Mead doesn't love you, even your whatever doesn't love you, the Lord love you. You are greatly beloved. And finally, it gives you rest. He said, go to your rest. The Lord Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are labor and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. When Daniel saw the Lord Jesus on the river, the Tigris, that flowing river, the river of history, where all things are taking place, here is one who's standing above it and controlling its flow. Hebrews chapter one, it said, by him, the world were made. And the world there is not the universe, the physical world, it was made by him. But the aeon, the events, events of history, he's have it all in his hand and he's in control. You know, that remind me of Matthew chapter 14, a little company in a boat, toiling all night and the wind were contrary. They thought they're going to sink. They thought there's no hope. And here comes one walking on the sea. Just like Daniel saw him. And what he said, fear not. Fear not. I'm in complete control. Daniel saw it in a figure. The disciples saw it in reality. And you and I have that privilege to experience it day in and day out. Reading the word of God is wonderful. It leads you to pray. 
it leads you to see the one who's in control. You will know more from the word of God. And the more you see that, the, the more you'll be at rest. Let's close in a word of prayer. Our God and our Father, we are grateful and thankful for what thou hast entrusted us in our hands by thy grace, the Holy Scripture. We thank thee, our God and our Father, for the one who authored it. And we thank thee, our God and our Father, that everything in it tells us of the greatness and the glory and the majesty of thy well-beloved Son. We bless thee, our God and our Father, that we, by the comfort of the Scripture, we might be established in our hope. We pray that these few words will encourage us to read it more, to spend time in thy presence, to pray our God and our Father, to learn more. But above all, not to have just some information. Oh, our God and our Father, we pray that the truth of the scripture will have us see the Lord Jesus in his greatness, in his majesty, in his complete control over everything, that our hearts might have rest and peace and tranquility in a world that is full of turmoil. Bless thy word to our hearts, we pray. Dismiss us with thy blessing. Help us to go on rejoicing, reading even more. Get us to our home safely, we pray. So we give thee thanks, our God and our Father, for the Lord's day and for the privilege of remembering thy well-beloved Son, in whose name we give thee thanks this afternoon. Amen.